Welcome, MDG friends. We are doing, yes, a Commander Deck Tech, this time by request by one of our subscribers, the Reaper King. And let's see, in a, one of our last videos, it was the Rondus Rage of Ancients, one of our supporters, Andrea Corridan. Hi, Ryan. Like your video as always. Would you mind considering for the next one since I'm planning to build it? And I'd really appreciate any suggestions slash ideas. A tribal deck. Some sort of Morophone or Reaper King. Reaper King. Uh, commander with changelings and other useful tribal lords as a theme. Thanks anyways and keep up the good work. Thank you, Andrea. And we are going to go ahead and do that groovy-licious stuff with Reaper King. And we're actually going to throw a Morphon in there. So let us get started. And again, thank you for your support. All right, Reaper King. Now, the... Color pips on this. Let's explain this real quick just so there's no confusion whatsoever. All right, so it's got two colorless, two, 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 two. So you could cast it for 10 colorless, or you can cast it for the white, blue, black, red, green. So it can cost you as little as five, it can cost you as much as 10 to cast this thing. However, you can do them in any combination. So let's say you had the blue, you had the black, you had the red and the green, but you didn't have the white. Then you could pay the two colorless, which in essence means that would cost you green one, red one, black one, blue one, and two colorless. Clear as mud? All right. Just clarification because that is a little funky licious craziness right there all right reaper king we can cast it for five in all the colors of the color wheel legendary artifact creature scarecrow um other scarecrow creatures you control get plus one plus one we don't really care about that whenever another scarecrow comes into play under your control destroy target permanent boom boom in the room that is disgusting i love it it's hilarious so this build we're going to be doing mostly like some changeling shapeshifter stuff going on getting that tribal scarecrow stuff going on and then we got a lot of jank going on throughout this build so let's jump in if you're new subscribe please it is very helpful to us and it lets us know we're doing stuff you like Okay, to not get long-winded, let's jump in. All right, like I said, we're going to be doing a tribal theme where we're going to be doing scarecrows, which frankly, there just aren't a lot of them. The Reaper King is the creme de la creme of the scarecrows and the rest are uh, they're average at best. A couple of them are decent, especially in this build. Okay, yes, I beat it to death. Scarecrows. Ramp, land, tribal, flicker. We're doing flicker build and a package in here instead of a bunch of control and counter spells because we're going to be destroying target permanents. Yes, as a reminder, whenever another scarecrow comes into play under your control, destroy target permanent. I mean, that's lands, that's everything, which is super funny, super gross. All right, we got a couple of our uh, staple protection pieces, heroic intervention to fairy protection, a few tutors, uh, a handful of removal. We went with flickering and removal instead of counter spells, and then a handful of draw, mostly tribal oriented draw, except for consecrated sphinx, which is just a card I really love. And I felt like this deck needed just an extra oomph of draw mechanic. Because we're not doing the, you know, Phyrexian Arenas or the Necropotence because we are in all the colors, technically speaking. Um, we're a little heavy in blue. Um, in fact, let's look at the status wheel just so you get a feel for it. So we are majority blue, but we are solidly in the other colors for Shurzies. Um, we're doing our typical roughly 30 to 35 creatures. Uh, roughly 33 to 35 six lands and then the rest of the stuff and even though we don't usually play some plane walkers in our decks we just typically don't uh, we actually have one that's super fragilistic expiala awesome in this one all right so let's start with ramp and we can blast through this real quick this is the stuff you'd expect all right arcane signet so we can get every color we need in the color wheel Bloom Tender is perfect for tribal and colors, not tribal, 
I digress. In multiple colors. For each color among permanents you control, add one mana of that color to your mana pool. This is going to give you a shizzle ton of mana. I mean, holy shnikes. Uh, barring like a board wipe from your opponents. Chromatic Lantern is just a great one whenever you're playing more than three colors. Um, it's not necessary if you're running uh, two colors, but three or four, definitely, definitely, definitely. Dark Steel Ignit, so we can get any color we need, and it's indestructible, more than any color we need part. Expedition Map, Sacrifice Expedition Map, search your library for a land card, reveal it, and put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. I mean, yeah, go fetch what we need. Fayborough Elder. Uh, I was on the fence about putting this in. I often am on the fence about the Elder. Um, but, you know, in this particular situation, since we're trying to fetch uh, as many colors as possible, um, this is decent. Uh, Vigilance for three. Fayborough Elder gets one one for each color among permanents you control. I mean, that's just an added bonus. For each color among permanents you control, add one mana of that color. So, we got some mana fixing built into this Tree Folk Druid. Farseek, so we can go grab a mountain, swamp, or plains, or island for that matter. So that that's pretty good. Pretty good indeed. All right, Marari's Wake, it's for five. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, which we don't super duper care about. Whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana of any type that that land produces. That's the part we like. We like it a lot. Nature's Lore, search your library for a forest card, put that card onto the battlefield, then shovel. So in this build, we're not doing a bunch of mana dorks. So we're going to be fetching lands, getting lands out there as much as possible. We do have a couple mana dorks. This one in particular is one of them. Pilipala. And this one is a mana dork specifically because it's a scarecrow. For two, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So that is to fix any mana situations we have. And this one, which is also a scarecrow, add one mana of any color. It does cost three, which sucks. It is not even remotely close to a Lanoir Elf or some other iteration of a one drop uh, mana, but it is a Scarecrow, which fits perfectly into our build. Target creature becomes the color or colors of your choice until end of turn. Uh, in this build, that really doesn't matter either. Sky, Sky Shroud claim for four. Search your library for up to two forest cards. I like this because one, those two forest cards come in untapped. And you can go grab a forest such as a Triome or a, a uh, Shockland, which is very, very cool. So we can go grab some duels or try lands if so desired. Smothering Tithe, I mean, yeah. Do I need to say much about Smothering Tithe? Well, yeah, we'll say a little bit. So this is one of those, hey, gonna pay two, gonna pay two, gonna pay two. And if they don't, when they draw a card, you get a treasure token, which is great. Super duper awesome, especially if it's in your opening hand. Holy shnikes if it's in your opening hand. You're gonna hear some grumbling by all your opponents. Soul Ring, yep, Soul Ring. Three visits, search your library for Force Guard. Again, we can go fetch a Trium that has Forest. Uh, we can go fetch a Shock Land, et cetera, et cetera. All right, we're into shenanigans, shenanigans, and this one is a tribal shenanigans. So if we foretell this thing for seven, then we can pull every single creature out of our graveyard that's a creature type. So in this build, of course, that's Scarecrows. Um, or if you don't do it for the foretell cost, just as a reminder, foretell is that on any given turn, you pay two, put it in exile for two, without them seeing what it is, and then you can foretell it on any uh, additional turn of yours for its foretell costs, which is pretty dang cool. And it's a sorcery, so you can only do it at sorcery speed. Also a reminder about foretelling. Uh, so that is just very nice in Tribal. Helm of the Host, I mean, yeah. We get our Reaper out, and then we put Helm of the Host on it, and then we're making a copy Scarecrow that isn't legendary each time, destroying a permanent each time it makes one. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty gross. Now, one of the very few non-changeling shapeshifter slash scarecrow tribal things, necrotic sliver, uh, because we have a lot of changelings in this build, that means they are also slivers when this is out. So we can tap one of them and for three, oh, not even tap, just for three, sacrifices permanent, destroy target permanent. So if the scarecrow mechanics wasn't bad enough, we also have some extra oomph 
some extra hate on the board with this particular sliver. All right, Pen Harmonicon for four. If an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger that tr ability triggers an additional time. So again, if it wasn't enough that Reaper uh, King is just super gross when it comes to destroying permanents, now we can trigger it two times. Boom, boom, double tap, bitches, yeah. All right, Seed Born Muse. We can untap all permits you control during each other player's untap step. This is just to give us some extra oomph for some of the things we got that you haven't seen yet in this build. Yarok the Desecrated. Oh, shnikes. This is even better in terms of double tap because if you're already double tapping, then you can trip tap. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Man, you're going to be board clearing all their lands and being super gross and hilarious and just, you know, don't chuckle too much when it starts firing off. All right, we're in a draw. Consecrated Sphinx, you get a draw. Two, you may draw two whenever an opponent draws a card. And now that Hull Breacher is banned, we don't have to worry about all this draw turning into uh, tokens for your opponent, which is nice. I actually specifically took out stuff like Consecrated Sphinx uh, because uh, there's a couple people in my playgroup that loved to play Hull Breacher. And, uh, well, I'm starting to sub this back in now. All right, Descendants Path. Uh, this is a tribal tribal card so this is great for not just this build for anything tribal you're doing that has green in it at the beginning of your upkeep reveal the top card of your library if it's a creature card that shares a creature type with a creature you control you may cast that card without paying its mana cost free creature spells hell yeah otherwise put that card on the bottom of your library your library there yeah yeah all right i'm gonna mess up this name i always do Yahoria, Yahoria, Yahoria. Weatherlight Captain for four. Whenever you cast a historic spell, draw a card. Now this is artifacts, which is mainly us because we have lots of artifacts going on. Legendaries and sagas are historic. So between our legendaries and our artifacts, we're gonna have a lot of draw out of this creature. Otherwise, I would say put put in something else. This is this is pretty fantastic in this build. More tribal because we are also in blue. As Kinder Discovery uh, enters the battlefield, choose creature type, Scarecrow. Whenever a creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield or attacks, even attacks, draw a card. Yes, yes, and yes. And another card uh, opponents love to hate is Rhystic Study. You're gonna pay one, you're gonna pay one. Er, repeat, you're gonna pay one. You Actually, you just gotta remember to ask that. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays one. You may, you have a choice. So just remember to always ask that question so you can draw. Sylvan Library, mm, the jankiest awesome draw card in green. At the beginning of your draw step, you may draw two additional cards if you do choose two cards in your hand drawn this turn. For each of those cards, pay four life. I mean, uh, this is in a lot of our builds. If you're not familiar with this already, it, it, put it in there if you got it, it's great. Uh, you get to basically draw three cards and pay eight uh, if you want to keep all three in your hand. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, we're going to blast through the dual land uh, action we got going on here and Triomes. I purposely didn't put the original duels in here. Uh, you know, obviously, if you have them, run them. Uh, but we have the shock lands, the fetch lands, the Triomes, very few basic lands in this. Um, so let's just blast through. So shock, uh, fetch. Uh, oh, and we're also running the uh, battle bonds. I think this is out of battle bonds. Yeah, um, the ones that come untapped if you have two or more opponents. So we're just going to blast through these. These are the ones you're expecting. Shock lands. Command tower, of course. Um, we have a few of the pathways. The Craig Crown pathway. The uh, black green iteration. Exotic orchard, which is always helpful in this kind of uh, deck. Uh, more fetchy fetchies. Do, 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 do. I mean, you know what? Here. Here we go. Here we go. Where's that land? So, the land's going to be exactly what you expect. We got all the triomes in here. We got the fetch lands. We got the shock lands. I think that's pretty much. And then all of the come untapped if you have two or more uh, peeps. 
that you're playing again. And I just love these triomes. And like I was saying earlier, these tri triomes have forest in them, if that's applicable. So that is very nice for using our ramp spells. All right, on to the next. We are into tribal. Now remember, a shapeshifter by itself is not a changeling. Notice on this card, it does not say it's all creature types. However, in this particular instance, Altered Ego can't be countered. You may have Altered Ego enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. Thus, we're going to turn this into a Scarecrow slash Changeling, whatever, on the battlefield. Except it enters with X additional 1-1 one, one counters on it. I just really like this spell. It is super swappable if you don't. Chameleon Colossus, now we're hitting some of the Changeling action. Um, changelings, which means it's a Scarecrow. Or Sliver, if that's applicable uh, during your play. All right, uh, protection for black for four. You can double up its power, which is pretty fun. Clever Impersonator. This one is extra spicy because it's not just impersonating a creature per se, but you can impersonate or have it come in as a copy of a non-land permanent. So that includes mana rocks or any other janky stuff going on out of there out there on the battlefield. Dax Duplicate, uh, this is for four. You may have Dax Duplicate enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield except it gains haste and dethrone. Whenever it attacks a player with the most life or tied for the most life, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Yes, so we can turn that into a Scarecrow really easily if we need to. Grave Shifter out of Modern Horizons. Uh, this is a Changeling, so therefore it fits into the build. Whenever Grave shifter enters the battlefield you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand oh an actual scarecrow uh, sacrifice heap dog exile target card from a graveyard which will come in very helpful if you're dealing with reanimation garbage maskwood nexus out of kaldheim it's a great addition to anything that shapeshifter changeling stuff Creatures you control are every creature type. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. That is great. Okay. For three, we can create a 2-2 two -two blue shapeshifter creature token with changeling. So you hit, you tap this for three. You've got Reaper King out there. It is suddenly a permanent removal. Permanent removal. Super gross. Metallic Mimic. Uh, it comes in as a, well... Scarecrow in this instance, each other creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter. All right, still got some tribal, some more changeling. This one does some fun stuff where uh, creatures you control have base power and toughness, X and gain all creature types. Morphone, I promised you, didn't I, at the beginning of this? Morphone would be in here. Uh, it's a changeling, yep. And as it comes in, you choose Scarecrow. And spells of the chosen type you cast cost one of each pip less to cast this effect reduce only the amount of colored mana you pay so at minimum we're reducing the cost of our spells by at least one at least if not two other creatures you control of the chosen type get one one all right phantasmal image this is uh it comes in as a copy of any creature on the battlefield except it's an illusion in addition to its other Types and it gains when this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability sacrifice it. So we can create another creature. Yes, copy. Yeah, yeah. Almost lost the ability speak there. Phyrexian Metamorph for four plus the Phyrexian, so technically three and two life. You may have Phyrexian Metamorph enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or creature on the battlefield, except as an artifact in addition to its other types. So artifact and creature and it's changeling stuff going on or i should say shapeshifter and uh yeah then we're off to the races realm walker this one's out of kaldheim too we had a couple good changelings in uh kaldheim as realm walker in his battlefield choose creature type we know what that is you may look at the top card of your library anytime you may cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of your library that is great all right, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces out of Commander Legends. You can have it enter the battlefield as a copy of another creature you control, except it has Sakashima of a Thousand Faces other abilities. The legend rule doesn't apply. So you could technically fly this in and make a copy of, you guessed it, the Reaper King. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. 
and another Sakshima, Saktuya, the imposter for four. And it does similar things that the Thousand Faces does. Imposter comes into play, you may choose a creature in play. If you do, Sakashima comes into play as a copy of that creature, except its name is still Sakashima the Imposter. It's still legendary, and it gains for four return Sakashima the Imposter to its owner's hand at the end of the turn. Whew, man, we got some really nasty stuff going on in this build. Scarecrow for three. Another Scarecrow, uh, one of the better Scarecrows. Sacrifice Scarecrow, draw a card. Return target artifact creature card from a graveyard to play. Mm, 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 good. We can start reanimating things, have Reaper King go off. I mean, yeah, yeah, buddy. Shape Sharer for two. Uh, it's a changeling. Target Shape Shifter becomes a copy of target creature until your next turn. So, as long as you target a shapeshifter, which is going to be on your side of the board, uh, then, I mean, it's going to make Reaper King go off again. Or if you need to do some super special jank, that's what this thing's in here for. All right, Stunt Double Flash. I like the fact that this is Flash, which is why this is in here. You may have Stunt Double enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. So this is going to work really well in our build and our synergies, but this is also going to work really well in a pinch if, say, we need to create uh, an, uh, a defending duplicate of something that's coming at our face that's going to win the game. I mean, there's so much stuff we can do with this card because it has flash, which makes this very versatile in this build. And last in the tribal is Unsettled Mariner for 2-2-2 two, two, two Changeling. Whenever you or a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability and opponent controls counter that spell or ability unless it's a controller pays 1. So in essence, this has got Ward 1 um, and it's going to just make people have to think about their mana base just that much more. All right, we got a few removal pieces. Anguished Unmaking, Exile Target, Nonline Permanent, you lose 3 life. Very good. As if uh, removing all the permanents with the Reaper King synergies wasn't enough. We got some extra oomph in case we need it. If we are the ones with a target on our backs. If you're playing this deck, you probably had a target on your back from about turn three. All right, Cyclonic Rift. The card that everyone loves to hate but loves to have when they're the one playing it. Uh, you can return target and online permanent you don't control to his owner's hand or overload it for seven and do it all. So you keep your stuff, all your opponents, put them back in their hands. This is a game winner, folks. It's very nice. Uh, we were playing in the play group the other day and Zach and I were both holding Cyclonic Rift in our hands at some point. I did it once, then he did it once. It was a very, very long game. I think it was like a two-hour game. It felt like two hours anyways. But anyway, Cyclonic Rift is a huge staple in blue. It really does give a lot of removal power to blue. So you should definitely consider running Cyclonic Rift. I doubt this thing's ever going to be banned because that would be a huge hit to blue. But we will, of course, do an episode on Cyclonic Rift if it ever did get banned. I would be very sad if it did because I love that card. All right, we got Damnation. Blast any uh, creatures we haven't been able to get rid of. Nice reset button. Kindred Dominance is nice. Choose a creature type. Destroy all creatures that aren't of the chosen type. Boy, isn't this a gross deck. I love it. Legacy Weapon. Since we're in all the colors, I said, hey, let's put in some super duper jankalicious fun. So for Zeban 7, we got remove target permanent from the game for all the colors in the color wheel. If Legacy Weapon would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal Legacy Weapon and shuffle it into his owner's library instead. I also love that. Now, let's read this one more time in case you're not super familiar. Remove target permanent from the game. So that includes lands, folks. So we, we without meaning to, we have land hate built into this with the Reaper King and Legacy Weapon if we so choose to use it. Then we got Wrath of God, also a nice board wipe reset button. Okay, like I said at the beginning of the episode, we have a flicker package instead of a counter spell control package. Now, if for whatever reason you decide, well, I'd rather have the counter spells, you know, counter spell and all the other ones you know 
and love true and are true and dear to your heart, then by all means, swap these out. I just think in this build, the flicker mechanic is that is much more powerful. So we have a few flicker pieces. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. Boom. And in theory, we're removing a permanent each time we do that. Deadeye Navigator, put this janky thing on Reaper King and you're just gonna be destroying all sorts of shizzle. Soul Bond, you may pair this creature with another unpaired creature when either uh, enters the battlefield. Brr, uh, yeah, when either enters, what is wrong with me? You know what? Let's start over. And I'm not even gonna edit this out. Soul Bond. You may pair this creature with another unpaired creature when either enters the battlefield. Then remain paired for as long as you control both of them. So you put this on Reaper King. As long as Dead Eye Navigator is paired with another creature, each of those creatures has for two exile this creature, then return it to the battlefield under your control. So we can start flicking it back and forth and destroying crap. It's just hilarious. Same thing with Ephemerate. Exile target creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. And it has the extra rebound. If you cast this spell from your hand, exile it as it resolves at the beginning of your next upkeep. You may cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. So you can do it again. So this is also a nice way to uh, circumvent spot removal as well as start flickering your guys back in and out, causing serious damage to the battlefield. Ghost Way. This does the whole shooting match. Remove each creature you control from the game. Return those creatures to play under their owner's control at the end of turn. So if somebody else does a wrath of some kind, you can go, mm, nope, I'm going to keep mine. And then, boom, they hit the battlefield. And in theory, like I said, you're going to be removing all sorts of permanents, which is hilarioso. Thassa, Deep Dwelling. This is also going to um, bounce a creature back at the beginning of your end step exile up to one other target creature you control then return that card to the battlefield under your control and it has the extra bonus of for four tap another target creature uh, we don't really care about that part fencer the sojourner one of my buddy josh's favorite planeswalkers i don't think it's his absolute favorite but it's a good one for five it uh, comes in with three loyalty counters and for a plus two exile target permanent you own, return to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. And it's minus one. Creatures are unblockable this turn. Uh, we're more going to be doing the plus two. And it's ultimate eight. You get an emblem with whenever you cast a spell, exile target permanent. Uh, you're probably not going to be ultimating that thing, but bravo to you if you do. All right, and then the two protection pieces you would expect. Heroic Intervention, permits have uh, Hexproof and Indestructible in the end of turn. And Teferi, you, you phase them out until uh, your next untapped step, and then they phase back in, protecting you ultimately. Yes. All right, we got some tutors, the ones you'd expect. Search the library for card, put it in your hand. Yep, Demonic Tutor. Lighten Tutor to go grab an enchantment or artifact, put it on top of your deck. It's instant speed, which is great. You do this right before your turn. Mystical Tutor, same thing. Do it right before you turn. Search your library for an instant or sorcery. Put it at the top of your deck. Profane Tutor. I like this one. It's out of Modern Horizons 2. I think it's new out of Modern... Yep, yeah, yep. Uh, you get to do Suspend for two. So that means that for two turns, it does the Suspend counter, and then you get to go Tutor for something. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. That's fantastissimo. Look at me just making up words. Rune Scar Demon. I like this thing. It gets to tutor us something. It does cost seven, but then we got a six, six beater. That's a flyer. I mean, boom, shalakalaka. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for a card, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. And if we start flickering this thing, I guess this is my uh, hand sign for flicker, flicker, flicker. Uh, then we just keep tutoring up what we need to keep the battlefield stabilized to our liking. All right, that is it, folks, for the Reaper King. Reaper King. Reaper King. If you made it this far, Thumbs up, thumbs up, put in the comments something about, hey, I made it this far. Uh, next time wear a stupid red hat, put that in the comments. I don't know you made it. All right, very cool. Thanks for checking us out. Check out the other episodes and thank you for your support.